All right, um, this is the first time that we're actually using Facebook Live, so um, I'm kind of excited about this opportunity. I'm here with my business partner, Dr. Anthony White, right now. So um, welcome, welcome um, to uh, our very first uh, event together. Um, we're excited to have you here and um, that you could join us. So um, I, let me introduce myself to any of those of you who, who don't know me, but maybe know Dr. White. Um, I'm Johnny Cat Sanchi. I'm a mental health therapist. Um, I am a, an educator. Um, I have a personal training certification and a nutrition coaching certification. And rather than have all of those things, um, I'm blending them all together in transformational coaching. That's really my, my biggest goal right now. So, I, um, so that's basically what, what I do in a nutshell. And I'll let Dr. Anthony White introduce himself. Well, thank you, Johnny. I am a personal and business development consultant, motivational speaker, um, spiritual advisor. And one of the things that I focus on is bringing balance to your life. And so, um, in putting it simple, I help you be, live a better life for the most part. Absolutely. And together, we are pairing together in order to share our best practices from our own years of experience, my 20 plus years of experience. And my over 30 years of experience. Because he's younger than me. <laughs> <And> <laughs> Um, but to pull all of that together and share our knowledge and experience with other helping professionals. Because yes. we've found that in our own businesses, so many of our businesses, like the counseling field, for example, or the education field, how much of it is thinking from up here instead of thinking from in here? And we really want to change that. We really want people to be able to reach out with heart-centered, people, human centered business practices rather than business business practices. Exactly. Um, because I think we both agree that, well, I know we both, we both agree um, that even the, the, the medical field, this was one of the topics we were talking about today, the medical field itself has taken dignity and the individual out of a lot of what it does. Right. The individuals behind it, the doctors and the clinicians and the, the, the psychiatrists and the, the, you know, the counselors, case managers, their heart is there, but the system itself doesn't allow for that. The system grinds us down. The system creates uh, such a, a, a disconnect between the clinician and the client that we're not really able to provide the best services, the heart-centered right. services that we, that we should be or that we want to, which were the reasons why we came into this in the first place. So so that's what we want to bring to you. It's a, like outside in thinking when it exactly. comes down to it. So taking that takes us to the first topic that we had. So our first topic on Monday um, was our space, the space that we're in and creating a better space in which we can really give of ourselves um, and and whether we're building a business or we're wanting to make changes in our life in in any way that that is we need to think about the space outside the external space we can control and then yesterday i talked about the internal headspace and getting yourself in the game and really what that means well today yeah and this is actually a, a quote and i'm going to read this for you because this is what um dr dr white said he said um when your sanctuary becomes a dungeon what do you do? What do you do when that place that you find soulless becomes that place that you regret going to? Mm -hmm. What happens when uh, you look forward to overtime and you regret going home? What happens when you look forward to, um, or you stop, you're no longer looking forward to spending time with that quality, that loved one? Um, what happened, what took place that caused that sanctuary to become your dungeon? And that's, that's something that we should really think about. Right, exactly. Because we, we do, we get into our head space, but then when we're in our head, we're not leading with our heart, which is what we're talking about in the first place, right? So I need that practicality as, as a business owner, for example, I have to write out a business plan, and that right. business plan has to be practical and doable and something that I, you know, I, can, I can work with, but it also has to be heart-centered as well, so I have to, I have to use that duality between both the mind and the body. And that also incorporates the spirit as yes. well. Yes, yeah, it does. And I think the thing is, you know, how do you fix that? How do you 
combat that thing that you know that you're having to face. And there, there, there's a few simple steps that I've used not only for myself but often with my clients. And it's you know it's four steps. Number one, you face it, trace it, erase it, then replace it. You have to face it. That means you have to acknowledge. You can't live in denial that this once was a sacred place. This once was a comfortable place. This once was my sanctuary. Face it that it's no longer, it's now my dungeon. When you face that, that come, that means you're no longer living in denial. You're, you're, you're not, you're not, you're not living in, oh, that's just, that's just how it is today. But the truth of the matter is, this is your reality. Uh, don't make a myth out of your reality. Let your reality be your reality. So you're facing it, tracing it. When did it change? When did, when did the atmosphere, when did it become toxic? Because it never happens overnight, it just gradually happens. So when did it happen? So you're facing it, you're tracing it. Now you have the power to change. You have the power to erase it. You have the power to move it out the way. You have the power to clear the air. Then finally you have the authority and the power to replace it. You can replace those thoughts. You can replace that environment. Not necessarily uh, tearing down the building, but replace what happens in the building. Replace what happens in your sanctuary. And that's how you can get to your place of solace. Exactly. That was powerful. That was good. No, but I felt that, I really felt that coming from the heart. And that's, that's a key right there. Yes. And the difference between our, our business practices when we're leading with our head versus when we're leading with our heart. Right. And when those, the, the, the things that we're sharing are really truly coming from a place inside of us. You know, the deeper divinity inside of us, um, as I like to say. Sometimes you can't make logic out of love. Yeah. Love is never logical right. because uh, simply because we try and make sense out of something that we can't understand. No one really understands love. We just feel love. Right. And so we embrace what we feel. But whatever you try and bring logic to, why does being in his presence or her presence give me butterflies? You can't give, you, you can't explain that. It's, a, it's something that's unexplainable, but you don't want to let it go. And to the point where this is why people say, you're so in love that you've lost your mind. Because I can't, I can't logically understand why my heart beats faster and my palms begin to sweat when I get into their presence. Logically, it makes no sense. But the heart of who I am, the, most, the emotions of who I am, it, it, then it changes something. And so then I begin to follow my heart because, it, watch this, and this makes sense to a lot of guys. Guys, we've seen, guy, we've seen a guy who is with a woman who is beautiful. And he is so on the opposite end of beautiful. And you have to ask yourself, how did he get her? Because she loved her, she, she was attracted to his heart and not to what she's seen in her head. And oftentimes when you're attracted to what you see in your heart, your heart, one of the greatest conversations I've ever heard was a blind man says, I never had the disability of sight to when I fell in love. I fell in love with what my heart told me and not what my mind told me. Exactly, exactly. I think that um, we, we tend to, um, we lead with the heart when we get scared. Yeah. Um, we lead with the, with, with the, the head, rather, I said yes. the heart tonight. We, we lead with the head when we're scared. We lead with the head when we're angry. Right. We, we don't lead with the heart when we're feeling those things. And yet, sometimes that's exactly where we need to go when we're angry or we're hurt or we're fearful. Go to the heart. We need to go directly to the heart. Um, you know, it, it just like we do when, when we're in love. And a lot of times that, that happens too. If we see something or someone that attracts us to them in whatever way that is, then sometimes I think we, we, we go to that logic in, instead of going to the love. Oh, that person is never going to blank, fill in the blank. They're never going to love me. They're never going to care about me. They're right. never going to like me. They're not going to think that I am attracted to them. Well, how do you know that? You, you know, you're, you're internalizing all these things in your head. Your head has become a dungeon. And you're not able to express yourself in the way that you need to be, to be able to express yourself, you know, in order to, to have that heart, those heartfelt communications and, and um, relationships with other people. I think that's, that's very true. And that can happen in business relationships. That can happen in um, any kind of a change that we want to make. Um, 
you brought up a, a metaphor, and I, I love, those of you who know me, you know that I, I'm just, you know, I'm an, I'm an ex-English teacher, so metaphor and, you know, symbolism is just something that is really deeply, inherently beautiful for me. And, um, Anthony, you said earlier about a cactus in the desert. Right. Now, a cactus grows in a dry place. Mm -hmm. It is desolate, it is dry. But the one thing about a, a, a cactus is it has to dig deep mm -hmm. to find its resource. It's not dependent on no one else to water it, but it does what it has to do for itself to get what it needs. And I think the problem with a lot of us is we have become so codependent on someone else to be a source to us that we become a codependent. Um, but if we become more like a, a cactus, we're not depending on, on the outside resources because we have to dig deep down within us. That means it's going to take some work for us in order for us to grow, in order for us to, uh, to, uh, to flourish. It, it takes some deep digging so we can find the source that might be just under your feet. It might be in your possession, but you will never know until you dig deep. Rather than sitting there waiting for someone else to water you, you will burn up and die. Right. Uh, your dreams will burn up and die. Your ambition, your passions will burn up and die because you have been so shallow or surface for so long and um, because trying to take the easy way out when you can just dig deep. It is going to take some effort. It's going to take some time. But guess what? As deep as you dig, the higher you will go. Exactly. Exactly. So... Um, I'm getting a notification on my phone that um, we have a, a little bit of low power here. So um, I think we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up. Um, and this was our first th this was our introduction to yes. using this too. And I I also the phone is a little bit far away, so people have been commenting, and I I didn't even really notice that until now. That's very cool and something that we make we need to make use of in the future. So if you commented to my lovely friends, I love you, and I will respond back to each of you after we're done with this because um, I'm getting old and I can't read it from here. <laughs> but um, definitely, I mean, the takeaway, um, I mean, my metaphor has always been the, the wet blanket. It's, it's a blanket that we may have had since we were a child, but it's wet and it's uncomfortable, but it's still a blanket, right? And so we, we will wrap ourselves in, we create our own dungeon. We create our own wet blankets and then we carry them around with us because even though it's uncomfortable, it's unpleasant, it's unlikable. We still keep those relationships in our lives. We still keep that negative thinking in our lives. We still can't see past to change. And so we hold ourselves back. So don't let your own sanctuary become your dungeon. Open your heart and lead with that heart so that you can have all of the abundance in your life that you want. And because we live, we live in a world of abundance and not scarcity. Exactly. So we love you all. And thank you for sharing some time with us. And I'm, I mean, this is the first in such a journey. Um, I'm just so excited and so filled with so much appreciation and gratefulness to all of you and to everyone that we have met and are going to meet on our journey. And um, we're very excited for where we're going to take you all. So have an amazing day because that's what amazing people do. Yes. God bless. God bless you.